100 micrograms T3, which is insane to me, but people still do it. This is where all the metabolic damage comes from, right? You're three times out of the reference range, then you stop it from one day to the next. Your TSH with zero and your T4 levels are depleted. Where do you think all that food is going to go? That's right, straight to your lower body and your love handles. Vigorous Steve here. I'm going to teach you guys how to get off thyroid medication because, well, summer is just around the corner and it means a lot of you guys are going to start dieting reasonably soon, perhaps using one of those bad Instagram fitness coaches who are going to put you on a ton of thyroid medications because, well, they need your before and after pictures to do their marketing for their Instagram page so they can scam the next guy out of their hard-earned money, right? It's a huge turnover of before and after pictures, people somehow magically getting shredded, and that's usually in combination with thyroid medication. Now, a lot of you guys are not going to continue with your bad fitness Instagram coach after you've reached your goals. So that means you're not going to know how to get off thyroid medication, but don't worry, Coach Steve, has your back. I'm going to teach you guys how to do that properly. Before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'm not just saying that, that really helps with the algorithm. The more you like and the more you comment, the more these videos get into the algorithm and get pushed to a new audience, including the guys who are overdoing their thyroid medications and perhaps experience metabolic damage after their diet is done, which is basically to do with you know poor thyroid conversion and poor thyroid production after you discontinue the T3 and that's what we're trying to prevent. So let me give you guys a little bit of basic human biology so you know what's actually going on in your body and how to prevent all of these nasty things from occurring when you discontinue the T3. The thyroid gland which is located right here around your voice box produces thyroxine T4, a thyroxine based hormone containing four iodine atoms. Now this is regulated by thyroid stimulating hormone which is secreted by the pituitary gland in response to circulating thyroid levels, both the triiodothyronine being the T3 and the thyroxine T4 concentrations within your bloodstream. So this is a self-regulatory process through uh, the endocrine system, but circulating T3 concentrations play a more regulatory role in thyroid stimulating hormone secretion than T4 concentrations. So for the guys that are not taking enough iodine in their diet, they might get an impaired T4 production. Again, you need a significant amount of iodine for adequate T4 production for them to be converted through the deiodinase enzymes. There's three different kinds. Their names are Hank, Wayne, and John. Actually, that's not true at all. They're just called the deiodinase type 1, 2, and 3 enzymes, numbered with Roman numerals. These three different isoforms of the deiodinase enzymes help to metabolize one iodine atom of the thyroxine from the tyrosine-based hormone and convert that into triiodothyronine. So, as the name implies, T4 has four iodine atoms and T3 has three iodine atoms, making it metabolically active. T3 is what helps to regulate your metabolism, helps to convert uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats for your overall metabolic rate. Of course, there's many different hormones which actually play into your metabolism, but T3 is one of the predominant hormones which helps with the conversion and the nutrient partitioning for you to basically convert one molecule into another molecule, making a dietary molecule into a human, a biologically active molecule. So this is how you have to look at it. When you start supplementing with T4, you're complementing your natural T4 production. That's why when you supplement with T4 up until 100 micrograms, maybe even 150 micrograms per day, you see that your natural T4 production and your thyroid stimulating hormone are not really affected. But that's in cases of people who are otherwise healthy. So if you suffer from Hashimoto's disease or another issue with your thyroid gland or pituitary gland, you might see that these thyroid hormones, the T3 and the T4, or perhaps thyroid stimulating hormones, are completely off the scale. What you would see with Hashimoto's disease, for example, where the TSH levels are super high, resulting in a very high burden on the thyroid gland, potentially leading into thyroid cancer later on in life, because T4 and T3 levels are not sufficient. You see this in cases with goiter, which is called uh, caused by an iodine deficiency. If you're not getting enough iodine in your diet, you don't get the building blocks for adequate T4 production then that results in you not having adequate T3 levels in your body, resulting in a very high 
thyroid stimulating hormone level. And this is actually how the thyroid gland starts to grow over time. Now, nowadays, you know, they have iodized salts. You can take kelp. There's other sources of iodine. Iodine is often included in many of the uh, general multivitamins, supplements that are out there nowadays. So it's a little bit difficult, I would say, to get an iodine deficiency. But still, in, in some of the developing countries, that might still occur. So there's a couple different hormones and a couple different nutrients which are involved with normal and healthy thyroid production, one of them being iodine. You can supplement that in, then that covers the you know normal production of T4, but T4 needs to be converted into T3, right? By the deiodinase enzymes. Those contain selenium. So it's also very important that you get adequate amounts of selenium in your diet for these three isoforms of the deiodinase enzymes to function correctly and convert T4 into T3 for normal serum concentrations. Now, selenium is very present in um, animal meat sources. So as long as you're eating a you know basic bro diet of high protein intake with beef and eggs and salmon and other white fish and chicken, feel free to supplement with selenium, let's say 100 micrograms to 200 micrograms per day on top of your diet that should get you around 300 to 500 or maybe even 600 micrograms of selenium per day. You don't need to supplement an additional 800 micrograms selenium per day, even though that's good for semen volume and um, basically making it rain in the bedroom. But then again, high dose and chronic intake of selenium, either through supplementation or eating an excess of Brazil nuts over longer periods of time. Because keep in mind, one Brazil nut already contains, what is it, 90 micrograms of selenium, depending on the soil that it's grown in, because selenium content of food is highly soil dependent. So if you have um, chronic selenium intake, it might cause all kinds of deleterious effects on your body, either acutely or long term. So keep that in mind, you don't want to overdo the selenium. You just want to stay within optimal levels, which is anywhere between 200 micrograms to 800 micrograms, depending on your goals and aspirations. Okay, so that's basically what you're going to need for normal and healthy thyroid function. It's also important to note that vitamin K, K1, K2, MK4, and MK7 also play a contributing role in thyroid production. So if you're supplementing or taking a food source that is, um, you know, has plenty of iodine, selenium, and vitamin K, perhaps a vitamin K complex like Gerald Formulas, for example, I'll list all of my supplement recommendations down below in the description section and in the comment section. If you're supplementing with that, and you're, um, you know, not eating like an asshole, sort of say, then your metabolic rate and your thyroid function should be normal, right? Excluding particular medical conditions. Now, as you start dieting, what a lot of people don't really understand, it seems, is that they need to supplement with iodine, selenium, and vitamin K, right? Because these three um, vitamins and, and minerals you're going to need for normal thyroid function. So if you're starting to take nutrients away or calories away from your diet, you're slowly getting into a micronutrient deficient state. This is why I always tell everybody to stay on top of their micronutrients. Now, of course, that's not the full story. If you're um, excluding carbohydrates, your thyroid function and, and thyroid production goes down slightly. Your basal uh, metabolic rate and basal body temperature is going to go down the longer you restrict calories and uh, food in general. So this is just a normal adaptive response, right? We're still dealing with our, you know, um, how to say this, like our, our primal uh, genetics that are, is going to regulate our metabolic rate. So there's a couple of ways around that, you know, a refeed over the weekend or cheat meals or increasing your cardio or um, right, throwing in the fat burners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at one point, right, your metabolic rate is just going to adapt and slow down. This is where the thyroid medications come into play. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go straight into T3 at 100 micrograms per day, but that's unfortunately what a lot of these unexperienced people are going to do. The proper way to do it you do your blood work first. I know it's blood work. Oh man, it's so annoying. But hey, check your baseline thyroid function before you start throwing in the thyroid medications. Look into your thyroid stimulating hormone, your total T3 and your free T3, right? Whether that's bound or unbound floating around in the bloodstream. I'm not going to go in all the binding proteins on how a thyroid medications are you know, bound in bloodstream because <laughs> there's so many of them. Fun fact is that a uh, high density lipoprotein is also a binding form for T3 and T4, albeit to negligible extent. So again, T3 and T4 bind to all kinds of different proteins and cells 
in the bloodstream. Um, right? We have thyroid binding globulins, which can actually be lowered by anivore or other anabolic androgenic steroids, freeing up more T3 and T4 in the bloodstream, making them uh, more metabolically active or being able to convert from T4 into T3. So that's just everything in a very short one minute elevator pitch <laughs> regarding that. See where your levels are at. And then the first step would be to add in T4, right? If you add in T4, in many cases, it doesn't have a negative effect on your thyroid stimulating hormone because your body has to convert the T4 into T3 in a normal capacity. You can actually upregulate this by growth hormone. Growth hormone is known to increase d iodinase type 1, 2, and 3 enzyme activity. So if you want more of an effect out of your T4, a low dose of 1 to 2 units, perhaps 3 units of growth hormone will help with the conversion. This is also how we're going to incorporate T uh, growth hormone later on in this protocol, getting off a T T3 supplementation. Now, maybe at one point your dieting is really, you know, subpar. You already reached 6% body fat and you need a little bit of a boost. You see that regardless of how much growth hormone and T4 that you're supplementing, that your thyroid stimulating hormone is still going up and your T3 levels are still bottoming out because the enzyme activity is simply not sufficient. And again, it could be because the anivore, the trembolone, or whatever else, that's part of your protocol. Okay, you decide to go on T3 for whatever reason, right? You need that little bit of a metabolic boost. You've tried everything already, but your basal body temperature is still going down somehow. Okay, 25 micrograms T3 might be warranted, but then please don't do that in a single serving. Take half the dose in the morning and half the dose in the afternoon. Don't take it later then you would otherwise have a cup of coffee in the afternoon. So maybe 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock at the latest, depending on how well you can tolerate the coffee and these kinds of medications, allowing you to fall asleep to your normal circadian rhythm. What I prefer is 12.5 micrograms T3 in the morning, and then again, 12.5 micrograms T3 in the afternoon. That's more than enough as a replacement dose. It's a medically prescribed replacement dose. This is one of the reasons why pharmaceutical T3 tablets are 25 micrograms, right? That's a general replacement dose for most people. Now, if you're a phenomenally large bodybuilder, you might need a little bit more as a replacement dose because you have so much tissue and you're eating so much food that you simply require more T3. In that case, 37.5 micrograms T3 is plenty, right? Anything over that is just super physiological, which there's something to say for that, but you're probably just too, too fat and you haven't exhausted all of the other methods to get your fat loss going, right? And there's plenty of them, trust me. So you're supplementing your thyroid in. This means if you're doing it like this, it should not have a negative effect on your thyroid stimulating hormone. In my case, many of my clients' cases and other people that I recommended this protocol to, 12.5 micrograms T3, pharmaceutical grade, twice per day, 25 micrograms in total, keeps their thyroid stimulating hormone in range. So that means T4 production is still going to continue. So you're still going to get a little bit of conversion from the T4 that you're producing to T3 through the iodinase enzyme activity, which might or might not be upregulated by exogenous growth hormone use. If you're going over that, you see that you're proven with blood work, again, blood work, guys, you see that your thyroid stimulating hormone levels go down, then you need to supplement with T4 as well. In this sense, you want, let's say, a two to one conversion of T4 into T3, even though circulating levels are about 14 to 1, right? When you start supplementing exogenously, this is the reason why armor thyroid is a 2 to 1 ratio of T4 into T3. If you're supplementing with 25 micrograms T3, you would want about 50 micrograms T4. And you can dose this in a similar fashion as your T3. You take 25 micrograms T4 with your T3 in the morning, 12.5 micrograms, and then again in the afternoon, right? at a time that is convenient for you to still fall asleep at night because thyroid hormones are known to keep you awake. So by supplementing T4 on top of your T3, you have a normal ratio of T4 to T3. Some of this T4 is still going to convert into T3, so now your metabolic rate is going to go up slightly and your thyroid stimulating hormone should slowly come down. It should not be zero because again, you're just replacing your natural thyroid production and your body's still going to auto-regulate to a certain extent by producing a little bit of thyroid stimulating hormone throughout several points of the day, especially in the morning, because, you know, if you do your blood work, that's probably in a fasted state. 
and the last time you took T4 and T3 was the day before, sometime in the afternoon. So levels have already tapered down and TSH levels should rise slightly in the morning of your doing your blood work. Anything over that, your TSH levels will be zero. So if you're going on 50 micrograms T3 or 100 micrograms T3, which is insane to me, but people still do it. This is where all the metabolic damage comes from, right? You're three times out of the reference range, then you stop it from one day to the next. Your TSH with zero and your T4 levels are depleted. Where do you think all that food is going to go? That's right, straight to your lower body and your love handles. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't be that guy. Don't turn yourself into the Michelin man overnight at the end of summer or at the end of your contest. Phase it out slowly. Right? So this is a normal, healthy approach to thyroid medications when your blood work shows that you actually need it. Now, worst case, let's say you ended up somehow at 100 micrograms T3 without any T4. So now your T4 levels are completely depleted because you completely downregulated your thyroid stimulating hormone levels. You haven't been supplementing your iodine. You haven't been supplementing your selenium on top of your dietary food sources. And well, because Brazil nuts have a little bit of fat in them, your silly fitness coach that you got off Instagram is telling you, oh, avoid all of the fats. No uh, almonds, no walnuts, and definitely no Brazil nuts, bro. Right? You might be selenium deficient as well. And you haven't been supplementing with vitamin K, a complex like Gero Formulas. So you're super micronutrient deficient. You're on a ton of T3 and you're going to discontinue that cold turkey because you're not paying your fitness coach for a um, you know reverse diet. And they got their before and after pictures and their marketing team is now hammering that on Instagram, taking all the credits for your hard work. And the fitness industry nowadays, it's so transparent. I don't see how you guys don't see it. Anyway, so you're now at um, a little bit of a, a clusterfuck, I would say. Right? Your TSH is low, your T4 is non-existent, your T3 is tapering off because you discontinued it cold turkey in a matter of a couple of days, your show is over, you basically have no thyroid hormones in your system. Keep in mind that thyroid stimulating hormones also increase the sensitivity and help you regulate your response to catecholamines being epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. So now your thyroid hormones are zero and your sensitivity to all the hormones that are keeping you awake and giving you energy uh, basically zero also guess what's going to happen metabolic damage actually no it's post contest blues where you're just feeling sleepy all the freaking time you have this severe adrenal fatigue you probably didn't supplement with dha and pregnenolone which helps to combat that and increases the sensitivity to caffeine and these catecholamines as well so you're completely bottomed out in basically all aspects sleeping all day and when you're awake you're eating like a butthole so guess what you're going to get obese fast so the easiest way to prevent that is just giving yourself some time to let these hormones phase out and you can taper them over time so worst case scenario you're on 100 micrograms of t3 why don't we slowly taper that downwards over the next couple of weeks during this time you're getting your diet in check so instead of um you know eating uh, everything you can see inside. Maybe you do that for one day, you feel sick and disgusted it with yourself, both nauseating and uh, you know, in your own reflection, now that you have a moon face and you're retaining a lot of water. You do it for one day, okay, you get it out of your system, right? Fair play, you won your show, whatever, right? You did your photo shoot, you reached your goals, you look good on the beach, whatever. You eat like an asshole for a day, get it out of your system, done. Start tapering the thyroid medications down slowly, maybe 25 micrograms per week. This will give you a whole month to phase off the thyroid medications. Make sure you get yourself an ear thermometer that's digital like the Thermoscan 7 by Braun. I'll link it down below. This one is actually made for toddlers. So for the guys that are on a high dose trend or anabolic energetic steroids in general, you guys know that some of your headphones are already falling out because there's a muscle in your ear and feel free to test it out yourself. You put your finger in your ear, you start chewing. You can feel that there's a muscle there. And when you're on a lot of anabolics, this muscle also grows, causing your headphones or your um, earpieces <laughs> to fall out. This is one of the reasons why a lot of pro bodybuilders are actually wearing headphones. They're encapsulating their ears um, because, again, the inner ear headphones are not really uh, functioning as they should be. If you see that your basal body temperature upon waking is 37 or 37.5 degrees Celsius, or 98.5 to 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That means you have a high basal body temperature 
and it means you can start phasing out the thyroid medications. You can go from 100 micrograms to 75 micrograms, maintain it there for a week. After a couple days, you might notice that your basal body temperature goes down to normal ranges of 37 degrees Celsius or 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit. When that happens, you can actually increase your food slightly. So this is part of the reverse diet. Let's say you were eating 2000 calories. At the end of your diet on 100 micrograms T3, you lower the T3 to 75 micrograms. And as soon as your basal body temperature goes down to normal ranges, you can increase the food with a 10% increment. Let's say 2,200 calories or 2,500 calories if you feel so inclined. This will increase your basal body temperature again to 37, 37.5 degrees Celsius or 98.5 to 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, indicating a high normal basal body temperature. Hold it there for a couple of days, then reduce the T3 to 50 micrograms per day, right? You keep doing this until you're at 25 micrograms T3 per day. This might require a couple dietary adjustments, a couple adjustments of the T3 slowly coming down. Feel free to do it with 12.5 microgram adjustments. During this time, you slowly bring your food up while you're tapering the T3 down. You will have a whole month to do this, so take it slow, right? Keep checking your basal body temperature with an ear thermometer. Uh, keep checking your blood work every four weeks or so to make sure that you're on the right track and that your thyroid levels are actually coming back into range. And during this time, you should start supplementing with T4 because at one point you're going to take the T3 out and you need normal conversion of T4 into T3. So you're supplementing with, let's say, 50 to 100 micrograms T4, depending on your blood uh, concentrations and how well your thyroid stimulating hormone is actually picking back up because it highly depends on how long you've been using T3 um, for your TSH levels to slowly come back up. And it might only happen when you're back at a dose of 12.5 micrograms T3 twice per day alongside 25 micrograms T4 twice per day, what I recommended earlier on this in this video. During this time, right, you're on top of your iodine intake, you're on top of your selenium intake and your vitamin K intake, right? Supplement those in, increase your food intake. Once your basal body temperature is at 37 degrees Celsius or 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit on 25 micrograms T3 and 50 micrograms or 100 micrograms T4. Then you can introduce the growth hormone at let's say two IUs per day. Feel free to administer one IU growth hormone at the time you're taking your thyroid medication. So that's 12.5 micrograms T3, 25 to 50 micrograms T4 and one IU growth hormone in the morning and again in the afternoon. Do that for a couple of weeks. Again, assuming that your body fat levels are not increasing and you can still steadily increase your caloric intake, your overall training intensity, you're still doing your daily fasted cardio and you're ensuring that your iodine, selenium and vitamin K intake is sufficient. So you're no longer in a micronutrient deficient state. You're in a micronutrient sufficient or surplus state. Once all of that is going well, you didn't gain any body fats. Then and only then can you reduce or even taper off the T3, right? Make sure you do some blood work, see and confirm that your thyroid stimulating hormone is actually back into range, that it's above one to two, maybe even three milli I use per milliliter. So that means that your thyroid gland is now producing adequate amounts of T4, but you're still supplementing with T3. So you're not exactly sure how much T3 is being converted from the T4 that you're taking or producing, um, again, being stimulated with the growth hormone that you're not supplementing with. So feel free to phase out the T3 with a 12.5 microgram increment, maybe 12.5 micrograms you stay on for a week or two, checking your basal body temperature with the suggestions that I gave you earlier in this video. And then, and only then, if everything is going well and your blood work is good and your body fat levels are maintained, then you can take out the T3. It's a very cumbersome and lengthy protocol. It might take eight weeks to 10 weeks, but if you do it like this, there's no absolutely zero chance of a rebound. All the clients that have helped reverse diet out of their contest or their summer diet or whatever with a protocol like this, none of them rebounded. And, and some of these clients I gotten from these bad Instagram coaches that put them on a ton of thyroid medications and fat burners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And within three days, they knew they were lost and they felt horrible. And they came to me, um, you know, asking for help. So I helped them. And again, 
you know, with a progressive journey of, let's say, eight to 10 weeks doing all the right things, they didn't rebound. They were able to maintain their shape and their thyroid stimulating hormone came back to normal and healthy levels. Take from that what you will. I really hope this helps for you when you've overdone the thyroid medications because you've gotten some bad advice, whether that's online or through hiring one of these coaches that don't really know what you're doing. If you were smart and you stuck with 12.5 micrograms T3 upon waking and sometime in the afternoon, you supplement your T4 accordingly and perhaps took some growth hormone and you were on top of your micronutrients, then well, you can basically stop cold turkey because your thyroid stimulating hormone levels were still in range. Your body was still produ producing adequate amounts of thyroid, uh, you know, in the thyroid gland and your pituitary was not downregulated. That's what I did a couple months ago. I was on this protocol. I stopped the thyroid medications cold turkey. I went to the United States. I walked a lot, but I still ate healthy. And even though, you know, one meal per day wasn't exactly healthy, um, even though technically on paper, I should have rebounded horribly. I didn't. Keep in mind that thyroid medications are meant to be respected. You can use T4 when you're supplementing with exogenous growth hormone that has a very good synergistic response and might even be mandatory because your thyroid gland can't uh, always keep up with the increased amount of thyroid conversion that you're going to get from growth hormone supplementation. Um, so you might need to supplement with 50 to 100 micrograms T4 just to have normal T4 and T3 levels in cases of growth hormone use over two IUs per day, let's say. Uh, but T3, that's meant to be respected, right? Do your blood work first, see if you actually need it. Um, and then, even then, a low dose goes a very long way. Increasing the dose to 50 to 100 micrograms per day, it just makes you end up looking stringy. And let's be honest, you're just going to sweat profusely to the point you have hyperhidrosis and the sweat is going to smell like ammonia because now you're burning all of this protein and you're severely catabolic and you're shriveling away right in front of the mirror. So don't do that. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. All of my sponsors and affiliates you can find there. And the ones I can't post on YouTube, you can find on my website at vigorousteve.com. If you still don't know how to come off thyroid medications and you need some personalized advice, I'm always available through consultations. You can find the rates on my website or we can handle it by email. The rates are on my website as well. Follow me on Instagram at Vigor Steve or follow me on TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigor Screw, you guys know what to do. A not catabolic front double bicep for you guys. I haven't touched thyroid medications in months now and uh, my metabolic rate is going just fine because I'm on top of my micronutrient intake. Right, you should too. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one.